So, you're someone who likes to do this. And you're wondering to yourself if you can do this. So I think at some point, every golfer and every lawn care enthusiast has had the thought, can I have a putting green in my backyard? And I'm here to tell you that the answer is yes. And it might be a little bit easier than you think. However, that doesn't mean that it's easy. So this video, I'm going to attempt to try to help you determine whether this is something that you can do in your own yard. And to answer that question, I believe there are four questions that you have to very seriously answer yourself that I'm going to help to contextualize the answer of those by talking about some advantages and disadvantages that I've found in the two years that I have had this green behind me, as well as walk you through some of the costs that are going to be involved so you can know about how much is this going to cost you and if that's something you're willing to invest for yourself. And the first question, and this feels like it should be basic, but it is critically important that you seriously answer this for yourself. Do you like taking care of your yard? Do you like spraying? Do you like throwing sand around? Do you like mowing every couple days, sweeping, knocking down worm castings, watering, all of that. You have to like all of that, at least to some degree, or this isn't going to be it. And you have to be on board with the time and money that you are going to spend to enjoy that hobby. The next question, and this is important too, is is your family okay with you taking the time and the money that it's going to require you in order to be able to do this. Now, later in the video, I'm going to talk about how much time and money it's going to take to try to help you make that assessment as well. Do you like golf? That again should be pretty obvious that you're going to like this in order to do it, but like really, do you enjoy sitting on a putting green hitting putts? Do you enjoy hitting chip shots into a green? If you don't, then why are we going to take the time? And the last question is, can you sacrifice the space? Because while I allow people to be on it and play on it and around it, if you want it to be a usable putting green, it can't be an always utilized space for play in your backyard. So you do need to have the space to put it. And I have a whole video talking about where to put your putting green, along with an entire series that you should go watch all of on the kind of beginner introductory basics of having a putting green in your backyard. So now in the process of answering those questions, let's talk about some of the advantages first. And the first advantage is a big one. It's a putting green in your backyard. How cool is that? I spend a ton of time out here. My kids spend a ton of time out here. My neighbor's kids spend a ton of time out here. It's just fun. Advantage number two, you're going to learn some things about taking care of a yard that you would not have otherwise learned. For example, real mowing, how to maintain shortcut turf and very shortcut turf if we're talking about the actual putting green itself. Learning about and utilizing products that you may have not otherwise learned about or utilized, such as plant growth regulators, various fungicides, sprayable fertilizers. It's a pretty nice conversation starter and icebreaker, especially if you're going to move in somewhere or if you're trying to meet neighbors like, hey, look at what you can invite people over to your house to do. And finally, as I stand here, I find an incredible sense of pride in the fact that I can do this and have accomplished it. And I've gone through and learned how to manage it, especially if you're somebody with a white collar job where you sit behind a desk and generate reports all day. The sense of accomplishment you can get from this is something different than you get in a lot of the other aspects of your life, at least for me. I obviously can't speak for you, but it's not all sunshine and roses, right? So let's talk about disadvantages. The biggest one for a lot of people, and especially if you don't have a big yard, is you are sacrificing this space. You are going to take 500 to 1000 square feet of your yard and make it basically only usable for golf, which means it can't be where you play bags. It can't be where you play soccer, baseball, etc. It's not going to do very well with that. So you're losing valuable space in your yard. The next one is the time it takes. I'm going to say it's about a 15 minute a day commitment for 500 to 1000 square feet of putting green. Now, what does that mean? Well, most days it's five to 10 minutes to go out there and mow. Some days it's zero minutes and then other days, it's an hour. And if you want to go through the process of drilling holes eight to 10 inches deep and filling those with sand because you're a lunatic, well, about two hours a day for three weeks. So while it may not be the time commitment you think it's going to be to maintain something like this, it is still a not insignificant amount of time. And the last is it's the cost. Maintaining a putting green, both from the equipment side 
and the product side is more expensive. I know Jeremy of the Greener Lawn and John Perry got together to talk about the cost of John's putting green and his project was exorbitantly expensive. Your project, mine, how I've gotten there is significantly less expensive than that but it's still a reasonable investment. So for the rest of the video here, I want to talk about what I've spent to get to where I am right now and about what I'm going to try to guess that you're going to need to invest on a upfront and ongoing basis. So first and in that video series that I referenced, I have a video on the equipment necessary to maintain a putting green. So we're going to need some sort of greens mower and we're going to need a leveling rake. And then there are accessories and things beyond that, but the most important and the biggest investment is that mower. Now I have these two guys here, which is a Toro Greensmaster 1000 and a Jacobson 522A Greens King. I bought these for $300 and $750 respectively. But I'm going to say the days of the $500 used greens mower on Facebook Marketplace are largely over. So we're now into the days where we're probably talking about one to $2,000 to get yourself a mower that can effectively mow a putting green. And the investment isn't just that mower. You're probably then talking about around $350 to $500 to get the real sharpened in a general service that you're going to need done at minimum every probably two, maybe you can get away with three years. The Jacobson has been to the dealership one time for a tune-up and getting the real ground, and the Toro has been to the dealership one time for maintenance and to get the real ground. Both of those bills were about $450 to $500. You're also going to need sand, which isn't grossly expensive, but it's not cheap either. I have 10 tons, which is going to last my putting green back here probably several years, and to get that delivered to my house, was just under $500. Then we have products like plant growth regulators and fungicides. Now we aren't talking about huge application costs. We're talking around a dollar per application and around $6 per application per thousand. But to buy both of these is going to take you $170 and $130. We're gonna need grass seed, which you can buy this bag on Amazon for about $15, or you can buy this bag at unitedseeds.com for $100. You're also gonna be doing this a little bit more often. Putting green has a little bit higher water demand than the rest of your yard. Hold for ASMR. Some accessories that you need to make it usable, cup, hole cutter, flag stick, height of cut gauge, those four together are gonna be about 300 bucks. So from a cost perspective to get started, I'm gonna say you're going to be at best case scenario, more sand seed, fungicides you need, plant growth regulator, probably around about $1,500 conservatively. And then I'll put on the screen here about what I would expect to pay annually for fertilizer, fungicide, plant growth regulator, sand, maintenance that you're going to be doing on an ongoing basis. And so there you go. Hopefully that's the information that you need in order to make this decision for yourself. I truly believe anyone can do this. There's nothing special about me. You can do it. If I can do it, so can you. So these are some of the questions, the advantages, disadvantages, some of the costs that you need to be prepared to undertake in order to be able to enjoy a putting green, a practice facility in your back yard. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions on anything that I didn't cover in this video, there's a chance that I cover it in that putting green series. So go watch that. Otherwise, leave your questions in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer those as they come in. Like the video if this was helpful to you. Subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along to everything we're doing here in our lawn. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.